Hi everyone, Stefan here again from Salford and Manchester Gaming Haven with the third and final instalment of Steph Paints Minis to an Acceptable Standard layering with the example of gold. And in the last video I showed you how to do an all over wash of Rykland Flesh Shade over Retributor Armour. And then I also talked to you about layering and I started layering with Auric Armour Gold over the top. I talked to you about the importance of thinning your paints. I talked to you about the importance of using Lamium Medium instead of water with metallic paints. I talked to you most importantly about the brush strokes that you use, how there's more paint left at the point at which the brush leaves the miniature. And so we work from darkest to lightest when we're brushing. I went ahead and finished this miniature with the layering stage. It took two coats of Auric Armour Gold. Hopefully you can see it's starting to be quite shiny now. I thought it might take a third coat, but in the end, a second coat was all it took. Uh, if you remember from the last video, those of you who were eagle-eyed will have noticed that I was using a Winsor Newton Series 7 1 brush to do that, which is a, a lovely uh, sort of semi-detailed brush that I use for layering. I, I do like the Winsor & Newton Series 7, not the miniature brushes, they're just the standard Series 7, and I own a few of those for detail work. I'm going to show you in this video how to do edge highlighting and zenithal highlighting. Edge highlighting very often is where a lot of beginner and intermediate painters leave their miniatures, and that's perfectly fine. An edge highlight is very good and it will bring out the detail. But if you can also master zenithal highlighting or spot highlighting, it'll just help the miniature pop that little bit more. It'll help your miniatures stand out. And it's an easy enough technique to learn. If you know how to do edge highlighting, doing zenithal highlights is very simple. For this, I'm going to be using a Winter & Newton Series 7 Zero brush, which is slightly thinner. It's a nice uh, fine detail brush. And I'm going to be using the example uh, of gold, and I'm going to be using Liberator Gold. So I'm going to give the pot a little shake, as you should always do. Liberator Gold is quite thin anyway, so I don't have to dilute it too much. It's quite thin and runny anyway, but I am going to dilute it a little bit. And one of the other reasons, if not the main reason, we thin our paints is so that they oh, so that they run nice and smoothly over the miniature. We don't have to put any pressure on the brush. It should be a simple case of wherever we drag our brush, we leave paint and we paint the area that we're aiming to do. So I'm just going to clean up my brush. And edge highlighting, as the name suggests, is very simply going around all the sharp edges all the corners, all the lines of the miniature with a slightly lighter color. So we're gonna go from our Rikama Gold, which is our layer, to Liberator Gold, which is our edge highlight. Again, we're only gonna put enough paint to cover just the tip of the brush. There's two techniques, really, two brush strokes that you're going to need to do edge highlighting. One is for an external line. Oh, I've got some paint on my finger there. Just rub that off. One is for an external line, so an outward facing line. We take our brush, we angle it sort of at 60 degrees, and we just drag it across the edge. So we're not using the very tip, we're just using the outside of the tip. We're just gonna drag it across the edge there. You'll see I'm getting the Liberator Gold onto the edge. Nice and easy, it's running nice and smoothly. And there we go. Okay, and I can do that same technique on all of the sort of outwardly pointing edges. So the same here on the sort of shield boss, the part the design of the shield that's going to be gold. I can use the same technique and just angle my brush away from me, turn the miniature, not the brush, just turn the miniature around and get a nice crisp line of liberator gold on this angle here. And then we've got the sort of internal sides of those, so the flatter lines, for example, the inside line of the pauldron. So there we just need a really good steady hand. You'll notice I very often have my hands together. I use one hand to steady the other. We're just going to use the tip of the brush to essentially draw a line around the inside of the pauldron. If we make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. We can go back and fix it. I'm just going to draw a line of Liberator Gold there. And this is also the point where we're going to paint those rivets. You remember I talked in the last video about not layering the rivets and bolts. There's no point because we're going to highlight them anyway. So this is the point we're going to do that. So we're just going to use the tip of the brush. And we're just going to dot on 
some liberator gold onto each of the rivets just to pick them out obviously the light would catch rivets and bolts slightly more than it would a flat surface so we want to do that so this is what we're going to do and then i'm going to use the other technique just to do the outside of the pouldering there just use the flat edge of the brush just to do an edge highlight there and as you can see i've barely started to do this stage and it's already looking nice and shiny and i'm going to do this around pretty much every armor plate every piece of the armor that is painted in gold that's going to stay gold obviously there's still the other colors to do on this miniature but everything that's going to stay gold is now going to get this edge highlight all the way around and that's just going to frame if you will the gold color on this miniature so hopefully you see the technique that i'm using i'm not brushing it i'm not going too fast i've got my paint nicely diluted so it's running nice and smoothly there we go we're just going to pick out this up edge of the shoulder piece uh, sorry elbow piece then it gives us a nice line of light on the elbow piece and then the top of the elbow piece as you can see i continually steady my hand by putting my fingers here my left fingers on my right thumb a lot of painters like to paint with their elbows on the desk and their wrists interlock that's also a very good technique for keeping your hands steady it's uh, very important that you work on keeping your hands steady somehow you'll notice here my fingers are touching my right fingers and just using the two hands to steady myself all the time and that's basically what i'm going to do again i'm not going to show you doing all of this miniature that would be incredibly boring but i am just going to show you a little bit more of the edge highlight stage just going to go around these chest pieces here Hopefully you're starting to see what it is we're trying to achieve with this edge highlight. I'm still generally speaking brushing darkest to lightest because it's thinned. I still want to leave more liberator gold at the highest points than I do at the lowest points. So I'm still dragging that paint from darkest to lightest even when I'm doing an edge highlight. So I'm still going out to in or down to up rather than the other way around so that the majority of the liberator gold is left at the lightest points the highest points on each of these plates we want to build that color up i probably will in a couple of places have to go and do a second coat not all over probably just in some of the highest parts just to give it that extra little bit of liberator gold just to make it that little bit more shiny hopefully you can see there even now and i've basically done about a quarter if that of the miniature that it's starting to get this sort of color we're looking for which is a nice textured rich gold it's a pale gold because we've used retributorama as the base and we've used rycon flesh shade as the shade but there's still a lot of definition a lot of texture to it no color particularly metallics but no color is flat it re it's sort of how it reacts with light you never just paint one color that's just going to give us a flat unrealistic solid color and, and nothing's like that even soft fabrics obviously have creases in them if you're wearing black trousers they're not just black it's everything from gray down to black as the light hits different creases different folds reacts re and is reflected back and that's what we're achieving with layering and highlighting we're adding those different tones within the spectrum to give us that effect of light of depth which is going to give us a much more realistic color at this scale I'm just going to continue working on this guy so in the true tradition of blue peter i'm just going to stop i'm just going to do these back shoulder pads first um, shoulder plates here and I'm going to stop and put this guy to one side so hopefully you're seeing what I'm doing I'm going around the edge of each individual armor piece it will take me some time to do that if I were doing this as a batch obviously by the time I finished the last one in a batch I can easily go back 
and start the next stage on the first one. But having gone all around the mini, so I'm just gonna put this guy to one side, should achieve something like this, which is super nice and shiny now. I've gone around every armor plate in Liberator Gold on this mini, around the shield, and giving it that edge highlight. And the next thing I wanted to do, which is the last stage, is to do a Zenithal highlight. And I'm gonna use Stormhost Silver for this. So what is a Zenithal highlight? A Zenithal highlight is the point at the Zenith, obviously, the, the, the highest point, the highest peaks of the miniatures, which are going to get the, the most light and are gonna reflect back the lightest color. So in this example of gold, I'm actually using silver as my Zenithal highlight. Again, I'm gonna thin it down a little bit with Lamia Medium just to get it nice and smooth so it runs nicely and smoothly and easily on the miniature. Don't want to have to apply pressure. If your brushes are fishtailing, and by that I mean you're not getting a nice point, generally speaking, nine times out of 10, it's the painter's fault and not the brush. Especially if you're using a good quality brush like a Winsor & Newton or something similar. If it's fishtailing, you've probably put too much paint on the brush, loaded it up too much, you haven't cleaned it properly, you haven't looked after it properly. But most likely you are putting too much pressure on it and you're pushing down. As you push down, it's separating the bristles out and you end up with a fish tail. And that's happening because you're not thinning your paints enough. And if you thin your paints, you don't need to apply any pressure. You should just be able to drag the brush across where you're painting and it should just run nice and smoothly. Zenithal highlight, what we're really going to do is keeping in mind that light travels in a straight line we're going to describe how the light hits and runs across the miniature. So at the very highest point, so for example, the tip of his helmet here, we're just gonna put a little bit of silver. The middle of this shield boss, just there, and the corresponding piece here, and the corresponding piece here. So what we're describing is a line of light as it hits the shield at those highest points. The same here. So on the pauldron here, and then obviously on the corresponding part of his elbow, just there. And then the corresponding part of the top of the gauntlet, just here. So that we're now describing, and then here, the wrist of the gauntlet, all the way down, fingertips. So we now described a line of silver at each of the points that sticks out all the way up to the top of the pauldron, onto this hammer, as the light would hit it and all the way up to the back of his helmet here again the tip of his helmet so we've got a line of silver highlight just all the way up the arm to the tip and that's giving us that illusion of light that's giving us that illusion of a real metallic shine and I'm going to do that around all of the miniatures so I'm going to pick out all of the highest peaks of the miniature with just little bits, not too much. It's not a full edge highlight. We're not covering every part of the edge, just little parts, making sure that we try and keep straight lines wherever possible on corresponding armor pieces to describe essentially the way light is reflecting off his armor. And that's just gonna give us the illusion of a true metallic color hopefully you're seeing very quickly the effect that that's having because it's such a contrast the white metal over the yellow metal is popping out very very quickly and you're hopefully seeing very quickly the effect that that has on the miniature we're not going to do this too generously because that would sort of ruin the effect we don't want to do too much as i say we're just going to describe lines of light as they hit the miniature. If you really want to get to sort of be very comfortable with a Zenithal highlights, just take my dogs. Very enthusiastic about Zenithal highlights, as you can tell. Just take a little bit of time on Google images and just Google metallic objects, just Google armor, Google, uh, I don't know, Google iron bar or gold bullion or something and have a look at the way in which that metal reflects light and the colors that it breaks down into. When I tackle a project in a color that I haven't ever done before, what I like to do is get a lot of images 
of whatever it is I'm painting, feathers, animal flesh, whatever it may be. Get lots of images up on Google Images and actually have a look and break down the colors into its constituent parts because flesh is not just pink or, or brown flesh is not just brown. Gold is not just gold. Because colors are simply the way in which the material reflects light back, there's a lot more than just a simple single flat color when you're painting. You want to have the spectrum of what is being reflected back, represented on your miniature. So I spent a lot of time recently, so I just painted a Lord Arcanum on a Griff Charger, which I wanted to do electric blue. I painted the Griff Charger in electric blue. So I spent a lot of time looking at pictures of sort of blue parrots and other animals that had really sharp blue feathers and blue skin, <clears throat> just to get an idea of the colors that would make up electric blue. And there's obviously a lot of green in there, several different blues, some gray, and there's some white at the very tip, and that's how I achieved electric blue on my Griff Charger, which I may show you a video of at some point. So you can see what I'm doing there with the Zenithal highlights. I'm actually, as I'm talking to you, I've nearly finished, to be fair. It isn't a very sort of comprehensive stage. I don't want to cover everything, as I said. I'm just going around, getting those lightest parts of the miniature, putting a crisp little bit of silver on each part. Some of the center parts of my edge highlighting, for example, back of the heel here, just getting little bits of silver just to make them pop. And actually, that's pretty much finished. That's pretty much done. So I can put him away, do the same, finish the highlighting on the other miniature, and then get on with the details. So the blue on the shield, the blue on these tarugas, for example, the belt, the, the sheath and so forth. But the gold on this miniature is now done. So hopefully that's shown you how to work with gold without dry brushing, how to do layering. If you have any questions, any comments, please go ahead and put those in the thread. And as usual, please like, subscribe and all that business. So for the Manchester Gaming Haven is a not-for-profit organization. But if you give us likes and subscribe, it just helps us grow and reach more people. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful. And until the next time, bye-bye.